Hi, I'm Henners, and I confront my cinematic blind spots. Given the untimely death of Mike Shank, I decided to finally take a look at the 1999 documentary American Movie. I first heard about this film through Anthony Fantano, funnily enough. He did like a video where he talked about some non-music related stuff, I think, and said that this was his favorite film, and I was like, oh, I've never heard this film. So it's been on my radar for a while. All I really know about it is it's about a filmmaker in Milwaukee. I don't really know a great deal about Milwaukee, to be perfectly honest. When I think of Milwaukee, I think of Jeffrey Dahmer, Alice Cooper's cameo in Wayne's World. In fact, isn't Milwaukee an Indian name? Yes, Pete, it is. Actually, it's pronounced Miliwake, which is Algonquin for the good land. And Miller beer as well. I couldn't find any Miller here, so I've got some bud. It's really not great. <laughs> Maybe it'll grow on me. Anyway, let's go. American Movie follows Mark Borchardt, a filmmaker with aspirations to make his masterpiece Northwestern. However, before he can make it, he has to finish a short film of his named Coven in order to raise the funds to shoot his feature debut. And while we see him go through the making of Coven, you meet his friends, his family, and most notably his childhood friend, Mike Shank. Perhaps one of the loveliest people to ever exist. This is a real gem, and I don't know if Chris Smith, the director, knew Mark and Mike personally, but he really captures their respective lives candidly. Mark's an interesting character who's driven by blind ambition and won't stop until he gets his goal, no matter how long it will take. If you look on Wikipedia, it says Northwestern is still in pre-production. Mike is a musician and a total sweetheart. He provides the music for the film, uh, the American movie, not Coven. And he's a shit hot guitar player. He's very laid back and fun to be around with some <laughs> great drug related <laughs> anecdotes. It's clear to me at least that both of them are very much on the autism spectrum. I always feel like I can relate a lot more to these kind of people given that I see life similarly and have similar life experiences. But it's nice seeing such normalcy and familiarity and I see a lot of myself in Mark and Mike as well. Though when he said Coven, it sounded like COVID. <laughs> he kept saying, after Coven, we're gonna get started on the film. I was wondering why he was pronouncing it like that if it was just a US pronunciation of which I wasn't aware. However, in one of the scenes, Mark asks, well, how else would you say it, referring to the title? Coven, man, what else could it be pronounced? Uh, Coven, uh, that's the proper pronunciation. No, 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 Coven, no, 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 no. Coven sounds like oven, man, and that's just, it doesn't work. This is spinal tap levels of absurdity. <laughs> There's a scene where Mark recalls his day and says that he had a profound moment where he's 30 years old and in 10 seconds he has to start clearing up somebody's <laughs> shit. <laughs> Literally, as he was assigned to clean a toilet and there was shit in and on the toilet as well as the walls. And there's another bit where Mark talks about how you never see a black screen in a film where it states that they were unable to effectively shoot the scene, so please just use your imagination. There's another scene where Mike is supposed to be handing out flyers and misinterprets where they should be going, but when he's done, they're told that the flyers that they had left over were left on top of a stack of newspapers and they were removed by someone who replaced the newspapers with new ones. And Mark remarks that it doesn't make any sense and Mike pipes up and just goes, <laughs> made sense to him. <laughs> The filming just does not go right and Mark is really trying to rush it through as soon as possible and even getting his mother to be the camera operator with mixed results. He's so dedicated, he even sleeps in the cutting room at the local university in sleeping bags with his kids who are just there along for the ride. You can tell that he's certainly a character. His family aren't too supportive of his creative endeavors. I mean, his own brother even said- Honestly, I thought that he was gonna grow up to be like a stalker, a serial killer, or do something where he would try to plan someone's death, you know? It is a bit mean. You do see bits of Coven as it does get made and it has a premiere and there are elements of it that look reasonably interesting, uh, but the documentary doesn't really portray it in the best light. <laughs> Out of context, it doesn't look particularly great. Well, actually, I should probably have a look at it and see for myself. One moment. 
But that wasn't as bad as I expected. The acting was passable and it was well shot. The score was nice. Well, I'm gonna give this a five out of 10. Mark and Mike did go on to other things. They both appeared on Family Guy and they had a correspondent feature on Letterman's talk show. And why wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> They're two of the most entertaining people around. They're just effortlessly charming. I got ticket subs from almost every concert that I ever went to, about 40 concerts. And the first one was Kiss in 1979. It cost $10 to see Kiss then. This is one of the greatest depictions of the facade that is the American dream that I've ever seen. Mark has real ambition and I admire him for that, but it hasn't appeared to have gotten him anywhere. Hard work isn't enough in this industry. You need a lot of luck and a lot of connections more often than not. And he appears to have neither. Though he's still plowing on regardless and if he loves what he's doing then that's all that matters. He did manage to sell all those copies of Coven, so he must be doing something right. Filmmaking is a really difficult endeavor. It, well, I don't know why he hasn't gone on a GoFundMe. I'm sure he could have raised the money from fans of the film. But this documentary really reminded me of the Anvil film, which has a similar level of enjoyment watching people trying to fulfill their dreams. I really love seeing that kind of thing. This documentary begins with an opening monologue where Mark talks about not wanting to be a failure and how he had so much potential growing up and he's determined to try and undo all of the bad decisions that he made previously. This more than ever resonated with me and it was a really moving statement that got me feeling motivated. I personally really struggle with feeling like I've accomplished very little in my life, but knowing that he can try to turn everything around and make something of himself makes me hopeful that I can do the same. To quote the late great Daniel Johnston, I live my broken dreams. I'm gonna give this a 9 out of 10. This is a big cult film and it won the Best Documentary Award at Sundance. And I could totally see on multiple viewings that this could be upgraded to a 10 out of 10. <laughs> we'll have to see. But the reason I chose to cover this film now is due to Mike passing away last week. Apparently from a very rare form of cancer that just spread to almost everywhere in his body and it was inoperable. A friend of his said that some of his last words were, I feel really bad for children who have cancer. They should never have to. This guy was just too pure for this earth. I hope to have a friend like him someday. And likewise, be a friend like him to someone else. The outpouring of love from fans of the film has been enormous. And you can really tell that he made the world a better place. So those are my thoughts on American Movie. I really had a strong and powerful connection with it and you know i hope if you end up watching it then y you do too if you have seen it let me know what you thought of it in the comments and also don't forget to like share and subscribe you can follow me on letterbox for more of my opinions on cinema i hope you have all a, a pleasant day rest in peace mike cheers You guys should think of another demonym because Canadians, Brazilians, Mexicans, Guatemalans, they're all American as well. Cheers. Yeah, this really isn't great. Nine for the film, five for the beer.